Yeah, the short turnaround here, but um, you know, and after watching my own film, we did see some some really good things on a few occasions, and obviously there's some things that we have to get better at that only experience can teach us. Uh, the uh, Maryland is a really good team, and they and they shot the ball very very well, and uh, that really opened the game up for them. So we uh, we go to Northwestern right now. It's one four out of five. Uh, did not have a good game at Illinois the other day. It's the only time they've, they've got great wins, impressive wins over Indiana, uh, Iowa, at Iowa, I believe, uh, Penn State, and uh, we uh, we're going in there, and we have uh, uh, we're going to have to really play well. It looks, looks to me as I'm watching them play, they're really connected. Um, they uh, uh, at least our starting five has been healthy the whole year, and they've been able to really get a timing to what they're doing. And the big man, if you were at our game here last time. Guarding Olaf was was an issue for us, so uh, we got our work cut out out for us. As you do in any game, let alone a road game, last road game of the year. And uh, but we're going to be we're going to we spent a little time getting prepared yesterday, and we got a lot to do today because we we may see a two three zone from wire to wire. We haven't seen a lot of zone since uh, Iowa stymied us with their zone. So we have a lot of work to do, and we've been trying to do it in these last in these two days. Jake, coach, you mentioned. That the things you showed the team that you stuck out to you on film against Maryland, what were some of those things? Well, Zach Irvin's play was really good. That he he really um, he's starting to. I think we've all seen this. We're virtually a young man that was uh, he he getting as many assists in one game as he had in the first ten games total. And he as as he continues to mature as a player, he'll use his left hand dribbling something that simple he can do now. Um, that was really impressive to see, and uh, it was good. it was. Um, we, Spike has three threes going in and out. It could have been a very different game, but that's that's when we're playing the really good teams. That's how if we remember how we played at Penn State when we played against Ohio State here, in Nebraska. We made shots. We just made shots, and we didn't in that game. Uh, even uh, even the good ones. We looked at our offense. We got really good shots. We just didn't make them. Max, I saw Derek was participating in the warmups a little bit. Mm -hmm. Still the plan to try yeah, to and, well, yeah, and he, he's helped participate a little bit today as he can go. It's sort of a pain tolerance thing right now, and uh, just trying to measure where he is. And uh, each day he's trying to do a little bit more. Uh, but uh, I, you know, the soreness the next day is when you try and sort out how did it get sore from just not using it in a month, or is it the actual injury? And that's what we try to sort out. So I'm going to interested to see what he can. He, he shot around a little bit with us this morning. And I'll see what he can do this afternoon. Coach, we had the uh, talk of Aubrey, and he seems to be like trying to get the home runs with one hand dunks and things yeah. like that about maybe just making the play. Have we had that talk? Yes, we have. We've had that talk. Yeah, uh, we've seen that movie before. That, that we're and, and we saw it earlier with some of our other players. Uh, that to make the highlight film is not what we need. What we're looking for right now, just the, especially when you're a young young man, just score two points. So grab it with two hands, finish the play strong, um, and it's something as you watch that evolve, it's sort of, um, it's exciting to see it when he gets that part. But right now, I think that's not just a battle with Aubrey Dawkins. That's every player, we don't watch games anymore, we wait for the highlights or we look for them on Twitter. And that's common to, in our society and we have to, it's our job as coaches to understand that's that's not what wins game. We've got to teach about winning instead of highlights. No, very good. Very good. We will we'll put his name into the NBA advisory, uh, and uh, so that we can get some type of idea. They don't do it this early. Um, I've been assured he'll be one of the first ones on their list that they'll look at. On, on Aubrey, what, where's the balance there? On you know, you want a guy who yeah. can play that yeah. way to play freely versus right. braining himself in a little bit too right. much, maybe making himself less effective. How does? That's another one of our jobs as coaches to, to do, to try to get that point across to them that we do want. You know, it's pretty simple. Sometimes we said, if you're going to do that, it better work. That's, that's you know, we're okay with it. You know, you should watch your 40 footer. Well, it, it should go in. And so we've had some guys who get a license to do that. But he is, he's really, um, he, he's learning from these experiments. I think he still is still trying to control how high he can jump now with even more. Being in better shape probably he's ever been, more conditioning. John Sanderson, um, he's he can jump out of the gym, but he's got to also learn to control that as well. But I, I he he's coachable. Let's put it that way, and he'll learn that. 
and I'm sure it's not the first time it's been said, including probably his father. Anybody else? I guess just looking at the, the Big Ten for a second. Oh, two teams in the, the top 25, but it looks like it could be as many as seven in the tournament. Where's the balance between elite and a lot of good teams that might not be great? You know, we've been, we have been so strong in, over the last couple of years. I mean, really strong. With, with the attrition to the NBA that, that some of our teams have seen, including us, it's hard to maintain that as a league. But I think that's across the country as well. But it was just the fact, I mean, you look at our Indiana game two years ago, when we were number one and they were number two, there's six NBA first round draft choices in that game, I think. And so it is, I mean, where, where do you see that now? Well, you'll see that again. But right, you just can't have that every single year as, as the talent goes around the country. So I think we're, if you watch, you know, if you look at the challenge, our success in the challenge, if you just look at the crossover games, I, uh, we can measure this after we see how much success we have in the NCAA tournament. But there's a lot of good teams that can, do, can make a run in, in that tournament from the Big Ten. You talked about Aubrey being the one who you have to talk to about those things. Is that with so many freshmen, is that more of a constant process this year, having to talk to them about things that are, I mean, they're basketball related, but not something you would talk about in terms of like week to week preparing for games? Yeah, I mean, with, with our freshmen, we have really worked hard to get them to understand the intangibles, what's important to winning. And sometimes it's just, you know, we have a couple of guys that will watch loose balls and not go get them with two hands or dive on the floor. It's things like this that are daily, we're tr daily trying to get them to understand um, but getting them to do that, it's, it's a lot of film work, and then gradually they'll get it. We try, you try to speed up the process, it's hard to speed it up with some guys. Is it any better now than it was? Oh, yeah. No, no. I, yeah, but I, look, you said, I, I, I see it. If I would look at these guys in December, right, there's so much improved. But you just don't necessarily, I, I, it's frustrating to me, it's frustrating to them, because it's that same loose ball that we back up and play defense, we could have went and got the ball, right? Or like you said, Aubrey trying to dunk those plays. Um, Cam, to, you know, just trying to make a play. He's just trying to, that's all he's trying to do is help the team win. But help the team win sometimes is not make a play, just keep the ball moving. Right. John, we talked so much about the injuries that the upperclassmen have gone through. Have you seen some of the freshmen go through the, the hitting the wall and, and the fatigue and everything else? And that's hurting you a little bit more because you can't play them as many minutes, you got to lean on Dockage and yeah. Leonard a little bit more yeah. because of that. You know, I wor I've worried about it. I haven't really seen it to any degree other than if you just look at the shooting stats, you'll see that Aubrey and Muhammad have dropped off the last five games. Uh, and so you, you may be a little bit there in their legs. And we don't have many other choices to do that. We try to conserve them as much as we can in practice. Uh, but that's still hard because, I mean, I'm, they'll be doing left-hand dribbling today and just, you know, doing these little drills with us. But we're trying to do this low impact as much as possible. But I know combined the, the Italy trip in August and all these games, they played a lot of minutes. And I'm sure um, how, however the season ends, um, they'll need that time to rest because they, they've really been through a lot of positive experience right now, but that doesn't necessarily lead them to be at their best when they're out there all the time, all the time. Back over here, Chris. Zach said he was lobbying to go in with the two fouls. Yeah. What you, what's your response to the criticism that maybe these guys shouldn't go there? Well, you know, there's sometimes it will backfire on you. And it just those last two or three minutes, all of a sudden, boom, things could blow up. Uh, at the same time, uh, yeah, I, I'd like to know how many times that no one ever noticed that that guy came out and played a great second half. That's number one. I think number two would be, uh, as a coach, if I know they got that other guy in with two fouls, we are running a play right at him immediately. You have to respect that. They're going to run that play at him and is he going to play defense the way you want him to play. Um, I think another thing that happens sometimes, because I think about, I always try and think about well, how can we do things a different way, is would he really have impacted those last two or three minutes? I mean seriously, we had two or three really good looks. They didn't go in. It didn't have a, a doc and Shaw did not hurt us during that time. Uh, Maryland hurt us. So there, there's a lot of things, you know, uh, I think there's times when you are you have two fouls and the game is going to get away from you and saving them for the second half does not make sense. It's happened very rarely, but saving a guy for the second half makes a lot of sense to me. And uh, you know I'm going to be wrong sometimes, but I'm going to I think that over time we've done a pretty well, good job with that. Max, Zach talked at the 
talking about how he felt like he was slowing down for a little bit, especially kind of off the dribble. Yeah. What did you see that sort of allowed him to have that game come at with that more manageable pace? Well, his ball handling is better, and, and he plays with a different pace. And, but it's balling, but he can dribble right now and look up. I know this is crazy, but guys that are just shooters sometimes are, we call them straight line drivers. They, they can shoot it or they can drive it and lay it in, but the in between is either a jump shot or nothing. And he can now, you know, look at, look at the action and we work on it a lot. And it's just, some of it's very low impact. What do you see? It's almost, you go slow process. What are the checks you're looking to like a quarterback? And just, some days it never clicks, or you see them, maybe they're playing rec ball and it clicks when they're 25. But sometimes it just sort of clicks and it's starting to click. Now, next step is Muhammad started to do a little of that. You know, Aubrey's working at that. Those are all things. Zach couldn't do none of this last year. So it's really a positive sign. Coach, you've talked to the couple times you've seen Zen this year, you've talked uh, early in the season with Karras at the free throw line. Individuals yeah. being very important in the, yeah. you know, attacking that zone. In the, in the past couple of days, preparing for Northwestern, have you talked with anyone individually? Obviously, not curious, but anyone who, who's healthy about? Well, we only had the we, yesterday. We, we it was more of a schematic thing yesterday. But the whole idea is get your get a guy who can really see in, in the middle of that zone. Um, you make sure your big man is making himself available. Make sure the guys on the perimeter are shot ready and pass ready, not just putting the ball above their heads. So there's a lot to go goes through that of just feeling the zone out. So we'll work on it a lot today. Um, you know, it's just interesting that both Duke and now Chris has played a lot of zone where they traditionally have never played it, and stay in front of people as we, as we have had to too. So um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes your zone offense is great, like Illinois was the other day. It wasn't so good when they played against us. It wasn't as good. We made a couple shots at the end that hurt us, but there sometimes your zone offense just clicks. But talking with some of the guys, it, it's kind of clear the, the, the mental wear and tear more than the mm -hmm. physical stuff takes a bit of a toll, especially in a year like mm -hmm. this. Where are you on that? Where am I on? Yeah. It's, I think with all our, our, our coaches, we get frustrated because we know we're close, but trying to get that next you know, um, level of, uh, of achievement from them is difficult to do because you're just right there, man. Either just make that shot or make that pass or, you know, don't throw that pass down there. Get it, you know, get it up in here. The only way we do is just stay patient with it and continue to work on skill level. And that's that's the biggest thing. I want to continue to have that right attitude with them. And it's, but it's difficult sometimes, and it's difficult for them to hear the same thing over and over. So uh, we just got to work together to understand this is just temporary. This is part of the process. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not walking off a ledge of a building or anything like that. I mean, I'm fine. But it, it has, I think you get, when you have your last couple of years be the way we were, you just get spoiled. And, and you're expecting certain things, and you got to tone it back and say they're just kids still. They can do this. And in a year, I guess, for as long as you've been doing this, what have you learned? differently or anything new by going through No, this? no, what I have learned is it can happen. I've always thought this was part of the process of turning a program around. When you took over a team, this is what you signed up for. They, they came in and they said, come on in and get it, get it going, coach. And uh, didn't expect that to have to do it two or three times with this at the same program. You think once you get it there, you know, it's going to be there. And for this to happen, where we're, we're starting all over again, you just sort of Physically, mentally, just saying, okay, I've, we've done this before. Let's go do it again. Just didn't expect it. You said you're not on the ledge. 20, 25 years ago, would you have been on? Um, it, you know, because I've been doing this, turning the program, or you know, turning the pro. But I think at Lemoyne, I think I had after four or five years, we had a really good run, and then we had to sort of start over again. Those are those are tough days, right? Uh, I think I'm much more in control of my emotions now than I was back then. I don't chase referees, I don't get technicals, I don't do some of those things, take the frustration out of the referees as much as I used to. But you just, you try to put it together, but it's, it is difficult. I'm not, I'm not even doing daily mass right now. I'm getting all through all that thing. I do the prayers, but even in Lent, I haven't done as much daily mass as I used to. You gave up anything I gave up, I'm not eating between meals at all. At all. Which is frustrating as well. <laughs> <laughs> you just eat big, big long desserts. <laughs> So I'm kind of, kind of piggybacking on that. What are you doing differently 
wind the season up as opposed to the last couple? Are you, are you teaching more? <coughs> yeah, we're probably doing more skill development than we, we what we would really do with the, what we call the all-stars, the guys that don't get a lot in games, we are doing with the starters. I mean, the things that at the end of practice, before practice, we are doing drills that we usually do to build a program with those that aren't there yet. But we're doing the same things with, you know, with the exception of maybe Spike and Zach. Uh, Max was in doing, doing, walking through offense today. Uh, but everybody else, with the exception of those two, obviously Derek and Karras can't do it. We are doing with starters, Aubrey and Muhammad, pivoting, passing, ball handling. We are thinking about that we can't, we can play great defense, get a rebound, but if we can't handle the ball well on a fast break to make a play, it doesn't make any difference what, what, what we did schematically. At the same time, we're also putting them into those things. So it's, it's a force feed a little bit, uh, but we're not backing off and say, hey, wait till next year in any way, shape, or form. So we're, we're going to practice in almost two hours today. We did an individual earlier, and uh, I'm trying to keep my pulse on. don't want to wear them out, but we're, you only have two hours a week after this season is over. We have three hour, three or four hours today we can use. Is there another saying then that you're, sorry, but like you're doing it for both, it's both with now and then? Yeah, I think I speak to them about that. Um, that, you know, whether it's shooting, whether it, whether it is ball handling, uh, we'll do those today. When we shoot foul shots today, there's these drills we do where you're doing with your weak hand, you're throwing the ball up in the air, just anything we can do. To, to improve them while we have our hands on them. Because in the off season, some of them are really good at practicing on their own. Some of them don't know how to practice on their own, so we're trying to teach them that as well. Okay, guys, thanks. All right, thanks, everybody. It's, it's brief. Are you guys um, in the rules? We have no rules. No, no, yeah, this week, practice as much as we want to.